Today we're talking about the Airbnb algorithm and how you should change your prices, or if you should change your prices, based on how Airbnb is treating you season to season. This is day 28 of my 30 day long form content challenge. We did this live, but it kicked me out, so let's rip this thing almost live. My name's Sean Rocky G. Just thank you so much for supporting me, guys. So let me give you a history of the Airbnb algorithm and how it affects you as a host. Airbnb used to have an interest-based algorithm that was just always trying to show the best listings all the time, all the time. And that way, people would sign up for Airbnb, even if they didn't buy anything, they would stick around and stay with Airbnb. Now, we do know Airbnb's recently changed their algorithm and the world has gotten more competitive, which means it's harder for you to gain rank because better listings, just they just technically rank better. Wouldn't that be the case, right? So we have to find a way to get in front of the algorithm season to season, and I wanna tell you something completely fresh and new that you have never heard me say before because I'm reaching deep into the back to pull these 30 days off. Airbnb runs a projected model on its algorithm. It's really kind of crazy. When I found this out, it was nuts. I may have to repeat myself to let this sink in. Imagine Airbnb thinks that they're gonna get 100% booked. Everything's gonna get sold because of Taylor Swift. They will proactively, months in advance, show their worst listings because they know everything will get booked because they're trying to protect the search experience that this is still a remnant like artifact from their interest algorithm, okay? Even though the algorithm has changed, we'll talk about that more in this video. But if Airbnb only thinks that 30% of the market's gonna get booked, they're only gonna reach down 30% into their 30% best listings and shuffle the deck with the top 30%. They're doing this to make sure that they get the best listings sold but also distribute when those best listings can get sold, right? So you could be one of the best listings and may not always get to the top of search because Airbnb is trying to shuffle in worse listings because they do project a really busy season. This is kind of crazy. Now, this means the way that you will change your prices will be dependent on how deep you think the algorithm is going to reach down to find listings and where you rank. But now let's talk about where you rank, right? Airbnb will rank you based on uh, trust. It's probably one of the biggest things now. It's like the biggest one. If you ever had to give a cleaning re fee refund or there's a guest cancellation and it was your fault or you got a couple two-star reviews, that is going to be the biggest lever for your rank, okay? And recency, it matters. Airbnb has changed their algorithm to treat your listing like a credit score, right? They, they treat you still with some sort of credit, but since guest favorites, it's almost like on a per listing basis, each listing has a credit score. And the reason why we know this is because Airbnb removed the 30 day new listing boost, right? And I called Airbnb out for changing their algorithm a couple years ago to be more like Amazon. And then a year later, they came out and interviewed and said, we're trying to be like Amazon. I'm like, called it. So this is theoretical, but I'm really confident in this, right? I've, I've tracked the algorithm in a long, for a long time. So what goes to your credit score? Like we just talked about trust, cancellations, if you get wish list ads per week, how many ads per week you get does give a little bit of momentum, but it's like pushing a shopping cart. If you give somebody, like if 100 people add you to a wish list, that's like pushing their shopping cart really hard, but without somebody to continue to push the cart, it's gonna slow down at the grocery store. So wish list ads are not a permanent boost, only a temporary one. Now your trailing occupancy is gonna be another one too. Um, your amenities, like room count, all that extra stuff, um, and of course positive reviews, all this stuff gives you a credit score. But I want you to imagine now that everything that is not your price is in one pillar of the algorithm, okay? The reason why this matters is because price is one of the only things that we can control moment to moment. So now let's say that your listing would rank number 20 in a market at what we will call equilibrium and your competitor ranks at number 10. Equilibrium is if your price is the price that Airbnb thinks that you should be, right? Every listing based on every factor will have what it thinks to be an equilibrium price. Every listing has this, right? So your, your equilibrium might be 200, your neighbors might be 250, and at those rates, he's number 10, you're number 20. If you drop your price 15 or 20% below equilibrium, you can jump ahead of him because Airbnb ranks you on a value-weighted index. You might be a little less reliable. You might have less amenities, but your price compared to what Airbnb's equilibrium for you is, your price is way better than it should be. And that's how equilibrium works. But that also explains why everybody raises their rates in peak season and everybody still kind of like performs similarly in their algorithm because everybody's raising their rates. If everybody raises their rates, then they're all 20 or 40% over equilibrium, right? That explains that phenomenon. So if you're gonna take this to the bank and use this, you'll want to find out how booked Airbnb projects a market to be. And we might be able to see this in trailing data, right? We can find Rabu and AirDNA and MashVisor and they can tell us to what degree a market got booked, what percentage occupancy. So that data is actually usable here. Then 
we want to look to see where we line up in the algorithm naturally, right? We want, we want to see who our better competitors are, who's beating us in algorithmic placement, and then we want to beat those people on price to a degree, but that degree is based on what percent that Airbnb thinks the market occupancy is going to get hit. Because if Airbnb thinks the whole market's going to get booked, then you really don't need to do much because you're still going to get representation, right? Because it shuffles the whole deck, not just the top of the deck. Now, if your rank is somewhere just below half and you really want to make sure that you get solid representation, then you would lower your price to get a better valuated index. And this is how you treat your price with Airbnb's new algorithm, the credit score and valuated index. If you have questions that I can answer for you, which I hope is everything Airbnb related, please ask me. By the way, this is the pagoda that broke that I fixed. So, and this is the circus tent that I bought for camp that we're putting up. It's been a long couple days, my friends. Thank you for allowing me to teach you. This is day 28 of the 30 day long form challenge. Mix this video with the video from two days ago. The five rules that you should break if you wanna make more money as an Airbnb host. The five pricing strategy rules you should break. I'm gonna upload this, I'm gonna have some dinner, and I will see you guys tomorrow. And as always, I will see you on the other side.